Good evening, everybody. This is Daryl Moore. Can you hear my voice? Are you seeing the slides? Can somebody uh, type in the chat and make sure everything's okay? All right. Well, we're good to go. Um, welcome to Full Sail. Welcome to Creative Presentation. These online classes are, uh, are uh, sessions are uh, designed uh, to get you oriented each week. So uh, this week, the things that we're going to cover is we're just going to generally introduce you to uh, the stuff that, that uh, the, the system. We're going to talk about the reading. I'll, I'll explain what's going on with the reading uh, that we assigned. And we'll talk about the two assignments for the week. Uh, you have a discussion assignment about your personal history. And we have a main assignment in which we're going to look at a bunch of presentations from TED Talks. So uh, I'll get into those in detail and, and explain everything. So uh, the first thing I want to mention is this software. It's kind of uh, mysterious. I had you sign up. The reason you had to sign up is that it's being these uh, sessions are run by a third party. It's business software called Citrix. Uh, they run uh, business video conferencing. It's called Go to Meeting or Go to Training, and uh, basically they're running a server somewhere in California, and we're all connected to it. I'm connected to it as well, and uh, we found that while uh, these things can be kind of tricky, we've tried Zoom, we've tried uh, uh, several others. But um, uh, this one works pretty well, but we are all subject to the gods of the Internet. And so I want to talk about what happens when things don't go right. Um, we're doing a low-key version here. We can actually turn on the webcams, but uh, we can only run so many webcams, so not everybody could be to participate if we, if, we, if we did that. And there's no reason to really look at me. I'm not a really very uh, handsome guy or anything. So what you're doing is you're hearing my voice and you're seeing my desktop and you're looking at some slides right now. We're going to dump into the actual program and just run the thing live off my desktop. Uh, I find that's most helpful for people to understand what the lessons and whatnot. But by being audio only, we, we try to be a little bit lower bandwidth. Uh, this is a delicate thing. People connected all over the country, sometimes all over the world together in a class. And so, um, if you lose your internet connection, there's a couple things you can do. If you lose audio, you can cycle back and forth. Uh, there are these radio buttons that, that, that uh, mention that you're using your computer speakers or you're using a telephone. If you aren't hearing anything, you might cycle back and forth. You won't suddenly be on the telephone, but by clicking it and unclicking it, you might re do a reset. And if that doesn't work, you can actually just leave the room. You can quit the software go back to the link that you got in email and join it again. That's a hard reset and sometimes that'll make your software work. Now the thing is I'm connected to the software as well and we've had crazy weather all over the country. Uh, you know I don't even make it a uh, time of year anymore. It's like whatever time of year it is there's something crazy going on. Florida is going into hurricane season and uh, California is going into um, uh, mountain fire season and and uh, the Midwest just went through tornado season. And, and uh, you know, there's always some kind of crazy weather that's going to knock uh, people off the Internet. And so uh, you just have to be wary of that. But I can get knocked off the Internet as well. And um, I've discovered that if I'm bumped off, I can reboot my system and get reconnected in about two to three minutes. So if you stop hearing me. Don't leave immediately. I may actually be able to come back and we can continue the session. Um, but if you don't hear me after three or four, five minutes, uh, then assume that the, the internet got, got, got us and, uh, you know, that'll be it. So uh, we're going to try to, you know, stay low bandwidth. It's storming here now, but I don't think it's going to knock me off. So hopefully uh, you guys can, uh, you know, uh, figure out ways to stay online or keep coming back. And for the very reason, we record everything. So a lot of times it's not convenient to make, you know, I arbitrarily picked Mondays at 6 p.m. And I know that that's inconvenient for a lot of your schedules. And, uh, you know, there's no way that we could know what you guys are all doing because you just, you, you all have your own independent schedules. So if you're not able to attend live, it's not a big deal. We record these sessions. So if you miss the session live, the recording will be posted 
shortly after it happens, and you'll have all week to come back and watch the recording. So if you're not able to attend live, you can come back. And even if you attend live, um, it's a it's a great way to um, think of it as a, a notes backup. Instead of spending your time taking notes, you can just listen and find out what's going on. And if there's something you want to double check, you can always go back to the videotape and double check it. So you can count on a videotape of this session being posted assuming the session goes through okay. And if, if uh, we sometimes get knocked off or we aren't able to have the session, we then post one from a previous month. But uh, that's not as good because you, your questions aren't live and things like that. So this software allows us to be connected and you're basically just hearing me right now, but you all have microphones and uh, we can call on people and we can be interactive. Now in a classroom, if you want to be heard, if you want the floor, you raise your hand and you get called on and so forth. So if you look at the toolbar, there is a little virtual hand. Uh, it's yellow. I don't know. It's kind of Simpson skin color. But it's, it has a green arrow pointing up and a red arrow pointing down. It toggles back and forth. And that means that you're virtually raising your hand, seeking my attention. And I can see that. And if somebody wants to try to click one of that right now, I'll call on somebody and I'll give you the floor. So I see Brian Caffery. Brian, I'm unmuting you. You have the floor. Brian, are you there? Hello? Hi, Brian. Hi. So, Brian, where are you at? I live in Apopka, Florida. Oh, wow, that's not very far away. What are you uh, here at Full Sail to study? Uh, game design. Game design. Cool. Well, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to turn off uh, the mute button, and I'm going to let everybody say hello back to Brian. So everybody say hello. Hello. Uh, hi, hi hello. Brian. Hello. I uh, didn't make more noise than that. Come on. Uh, hi. <laughs> all right. So you see what it sounds like when I keep all the mics on. That's why I mostly keep them locked off. Uh, because we're trying to make a good recording for everybody who isn't here to be able to follow along, uh, even if you guys are being quiet, we find that if, if we're connected, if we have open more than 10 or 15 mics open, that the buildup of ambient noise just makes the, uh, the recording sound really mushy. So uh, we, we try to do our best between being interactive with people and letting people you know, uh, express their opinions and, 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 and talk, have the floor. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for you raising your hand. Sometimes I might miss you. If I miss you in that uh, uh, hand raise, you have a chance to talk to me um, uh, in the chat box. So there's a chat box down at the bottom. The chat box allows you to address people privately or publicly. It's default setting, talking to everyone. So I want everybody to go down there right now and type in where you're at. So we're going to see what parts of the country we have represented. Eustis, Florida, Casper, Wyoming, Oklahoma City, Philadelphia, PA. That's a good range. El Paso, Texas. Caldwell, uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Wayne, West Virginia. Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. South Carolina. So, a good range between the East Coast and the West Coast. Uh, we got the whole country covered pretty well. Uh, sometimes we even have people from uh, uh, around the world. I had a, a guy a couple months ago from Vietnam, and I could never figure out what his time zone is. But uh, if you're in different parts of the country, and I mention a time, I'm usually going to be speaking about the time it is here in Florida. So I'll be speaking about uh, Eastern time zone. And so you might have to do some uh, uh, calculations. For instance, when we say that all the assignments open up on Monday morning and they close at Sunday at midnight, they close at Sunday at midnight on the East Coast. But that means that you have to then reference it across. If you're in California in the Pacific time zone, it closes at 9 p.m. Uh, so you have to just make sure that uh, you do adjustments for your own time zones uh, once you get used to it. Uh, and the system tends to uh, do a lot of that calculation for you, so it's not that big a deal. But uh, the, the chat box is a way that you can participate. Uh, if you're shy about you know, talking on the microphone, uh, that's, uh, you, you can ask questions there as well. And as we go along, if you have a question, you can try to put it in the chat box. If I see it, I'll try to stop and, and move along. So that's the software. It's not that big a deal, but uh, just be aware that uh, if you 
if you come at it with the attitude that nothing's perfect, then you can't be disappointed. So uh, we also have some extra training. You guys might have seen this earlier in the day as you were going through the uh, first section of like mostly videos and things. Uh, there were some other signups that were happening. Now, the, the difference is this session that we're doing right now, I'm your instructor. I'm the one that's going to be grading all your papers and doing everything. So I'm going to give you the skinny on the assignments. You want to listen to me about all of that specifics and particulars. But we also have some generalized training in this first week that's open to all the different sections. So uh, that's more like um, a companion piece to orientation, whereas there's a lot of uh, little bits uh, and pieces to the FSO platform where people want to know, you know, how to make messages or where to find announcements and, uh, you know, how to, uh, how to upload work and all those kinds of things. And this training goes through that. So this is generalized training about how to use FSO to its best advantage. And more and more, we're going to have people who are using it on their phones rather than on their computers. And uh, the system is designed to be work, work, work both ways, but usually there's a different way to accomplish each thing. So uh, the online training can be helpful in finding ways to get around the system if you want to get used to it. But there's nothing about this that will append on the assignments. So this is optional training. Uh, there are three sessions. They're all the same. So you only need, if, you, if you're interested in the training, you only need to pick one. And so we tried to vary it so that it would be different times for uh, different people, uh, whatever is most convenient for you. And again, uh, the very first one is going to be recorded and we'll, we'll post that for people as well. But uh, that's something that's optional. You don't need to attend it. The, uh, this training here, it's not mandatory to attend live, but if you don't attend live, it is mandatory that you come back and you watch the videotape. It's, in a, it's an assignment for the week, so if you're not able to uh, attend live, we do expect you to watch the tape that's posted by the end of the week of it. Uh, all right, and getting back to introductions, uh, my name's Daryl Moore. I've been at Full Sail for over a dozen years now. I've been uh, teaching and, and working in video for all my life. Uh, you know, I'm an old guy, an actual gray beard. Uh, but uh, that means I've been working with computers a long time, and I know a lot of stuff. Now, I'm not necessarily hip. Uh, you know, if you want to start talking about music, uh, you know, I'm going to be talking about the Rolling Stones and the Talking Heads and Psychedelic Furs and, and stuff from uh, uh, before this century. But, um, you know, uh, I pretty much know what's going on with uh, students. I see them come and go, and I love teaching. So uh, what you can expect from me is to be available. Uh, to that extent, I'm happy to give you my cell phone number. Uh, you can call me if you wish. Uh, anybody that likes to talk you know, can call me and talk. But I'm mostly putting this here so that if you want a really quick answer to your questions, you can text me. If you put me in your, uh, your contact book, uh, and uh, I know most of you have your phones with you all the time, and I will answer anything that you write me on the Full Sail platform. I'm happy to. I, I'm always engaged. I'm looking for emails. I'm looking for uh, messages on feedback in FSO. Uh, but that is a turnaround. It's not a real-time thing. But I think most of us have our phones with us 24-7. I pretty much do. So uh, anytime a day or night you feel like you, you have a uh, question that you really want to answer to, uh, you can hit me up with a text. It really does not bother me. Uh, it can be late. Um, if it's, you know, if I'm not conscious, I'm not going to be answering, you know, no, uh, uh, no responsibilities there, uh, but you can uh, pretty much try me anytime, day or night, because I have an eclectic schedule and I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. So uh, you can text me and get uh, a quick response if you want. And so I've been teaching here at Full Sail for a long time. I, I came down here to teach digital video for many years. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we've made so many films around here. Uh, and then I've been teaching creative presentation for the last four or five years. Uh, it's the very first class that every student takes, and I uh, really get energized by seeing all the new students come in, uh, and uh, um, I'm always uh, amazed at the quality of the students that just keeps going up and up. So I'm really expecting great things from you guys because uh, every year the, the level of sophistication of the students seems to, to kick a notch, and uh, uh, judging on last month's batch, I think you guys are going to be really, really sharp, so looking forward to that. 
So who are you? Well, uh, we don't have that many people here, but uh, probably more than if I force everybody to, to, to call. So uh, I'm going to make this voluntary. We're going to go through and let everybody answer who they are. I'm going to ask you four questions. Now, these aren't trick questions. I'm going to show you what they are, but I'll give you 15 seconds to answer as we call down the roll. And if, if nobody volunteers, then I'm going to suddenly start uh, just calling names out and make people do it. So uh, if you... If you don't want to talk uh, out loud, you can answer in the chat box if you like. But I would like most of you to participate if you want. So here are the four questions I'm going to ask you. What is your name? Where are you from? What are you here to study? Because these first four months, you are in classes with students from all different degree programs. After the first four months, after the core four, you only will be studying with the people in your particular degree program, and you'll never get to see the other students and all the other degree programs. So this is an excellent time in these first couple of months to network and make really uh, good friends from, from other de uh, degree programs and get some great networking going where you can have uh, uh, connections to uh, writers and sound design guys and photographers and you know people that you're gonna need in your, your industry that aren't doing what you're doing. So that's what's been going on. So I want you to tell me what you're here to study and then finally, Give me two words that um, uh, describe your professional vision. So if you're interested in this, turn on, put your hand up. Let's see if your hands go up. I don't see any hands up yet. Does anybody uh, want to participate? I see one hand. I see two hands. Three hands. All right. So we're going to let this be voluntary, and I'll just go down the list. The first person is Amaret Visser. And I apologize if I mangled your name. Are you there, Emirat? Need to use the chat. All right, so your microphone isn't working. Well, then tell us what is your name, where are you from, what are you here to study, and give us two words to describe your, your vision there, Emirat. And as she's typing, I'll go on. The next person is Brian Caffery. Brian, are you there? Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, my name is Brian Kieferl. I'm from Florida, and I'm studying game design. And my professional vision would probably be creative and ambitious. Excellent. Good choices. Uh, Dakota Stewart. Dakota, are you there? And Amaret has logged in a chat. She's from El Paso, and she's studying audio production. Her two words are colorful and upward. Excellent. And I'm not hearing from Dakota. Dakota, if you're having trouble with your mic, you can go to the chat box as well. Next on the list is David Mech. And let me know if I've messed that up. Mm, I'm having some trouble with microphones here today. Uh, David Mech is not speaking either. I guess you might have to go to the chat box. Uh, Portia Naylor. Can you hear me, Claire? Yeah, you sound good. Oh, great. All right. So my name is Portia Naylor. Um, I'm from Detroit. I'm studying graphic design. And two words to describe my professional vision would be, um, I think that I had something, I guess, determined and unique. Excellent. Good to meet you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and Preston Hernandez. Hi, am I coming clear? Okay. Yeah, you sound good. Awesome. All right, my name is Preston Hernandez. I'm from Casper, Wyoming. I'm currently studying game design, and I'd say the two words that describe my professional vision is uh, driven and thoughtful. Uh, great. You know, I ran out of gas once in Casper, Wyoming. It's, you know, despite uh, everything around here, it's a lot to look at, but not much here, to be honest with you. Well, just one of my little memories. <laughs> 
Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right. David Meck has written in. He's from Arizona. And uh, he's not here to say what he's studying, but he's, his vision is artistic and outgoing. And so uh, uh, we're going to have to work on these microphones here. You guys are going to be speaking in your presentations. So we've got to make sure everybody's got uh, ways to record your voice. Uh, most of you, uh, if, you're, if your uh, computers aren't up to snuff, uh, we're going to use your phones. Uh, lots of people have been making their uh, presentations on their smartphones. It, it turns out really fantastic. And uh, so I just did Preston Hernandez. That's the last one. That's the last volunteer. Do I have any other volunteers? I'm going to shoot all the hands down. Anybody else want to make a go of it? Uh, I see Ronald McLean here. You have the mic. Oh, Ronald's not showing up. Uh, Latoya Lindsay. You hear me? I hear you. Okay. My name is Latoya Lindsay. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm studying music production. And um, two words that describe my professional vision, um, create, creative and motivating. Excellent. Welcome. And uh, Janessa Lowry. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you sound fine. Okay, um, my name is Janessa Lowry. I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm currently studying computer animation and two words that describe my professional vision would be imaginative and determined. Excellent. Welcome to Full Sail. And lastly, work. Roundtree. Can, uh, oh, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Oh, okay, I'm Work Roundtree. I'm uh, I'm kind of all over the place. I live in D.C., uh, our nation's capital. Uh, born and raised in Miami, Florida, by way of Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, I'm studying music business. And um, two words that describe my my uh, professional vision is nation building. That's 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 my focus. It's a whole conversation. <laughs> well, you've been all over the nation, so you might as well build it up. Excellent. You know it. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, everybody. That sounds great. So we've got a lot of really interesting people here. We're all going to be able to learn from each other. We're all going to be able to tell us each other our stories, and uh, we're going to learn how to how to communicate that. So what do I expect from you guys? Well, I don't expect you guys to have any particular set of skills coming in. We're going to talk about how to make creative presentations. I think uh, the first thing we're going to do in the uh, the uh, discussion board is tell, tell each other. Uh, each of us is going to say what experiences you've had. Some of you may played around with PowerPoint in high school or done presentations here or there. We're going to we're going to define presentations very very broadly. So it's any time that you're standing up in front of someone trying to talk to someone, connect with them, and 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 and. Uh, express yourself. It doesn't have to do with running particular software. It doesn't have to do with being in a particular computer context. Presentation is just about uh, um, connecting with your voice and telling a story. And there are lots of ways to do that. And there are lots of uh, arenas to do that. And we're going we're to talk about how to do that to best advantage. So uh, we're going to show you lots of software. We're going to provide you with tools. Uh, we know that we have not given you uh, your official laptop yet or we haven't given you software. Uh, there is some software that we're sharing out uh, this week that we're going to talk about, and I'll, I'll get into that. But uh, we're going to give you lots of avenues. We're not going to make you use any particular uh, thing. So we're uh, going to talk about PowerPoint an awful lot this month. Uh, some of you think PowerPoint equals presentations. Uh, it doesn't, but, I mean, it's, it's the 800-pound gorilla. And so... Uh, we like and we hate PowerPoint. We're gonna uh, we're gonna beat it like a dog and we're gonna pet it like a dog because uh, uh, there's much to like and much to dislike about PowerPoint about the way that it has warped our perceptions of what presentations can be. And we want to broaden your mind and give you a, a much fuller vision of that. But uh, these are all conceptual things. And so what we're gonna ask from you is to have an engaged mind. 
listen to our instructions and tell us your opinions uh, and express yourself. We're not going to expect any particular level of uh, uh, software expertise. We're not expecting any prior knowledge except that uh, you have general college level interest uh, or college level entry education. So um, what we really want is you to be engaged and let us know what's going on with you. Now, what you should expect from me, you should expect me to be available. Don't ever apologize for asking questions. I love you. I love to answer questions and I'm here for that. Uh, I'm in service to you. Uh, and so a lot of times in a classroom, people look up to the teacher. Uh, you can look up to me, um, but I'm not important. I'm here because you're important, and I want to help you. And if you don't take advantage of the help, then you aren't really uh, taking advantage of what the education has to offer. Uh, we don't expound the truth from on high. We discover it. Uh, full sale engages in a, a, a type of education that we call problem-based learning, which means that uh, we learn by doing and we do fun things. So uh, there's, there's really no point in coming to school if you're not having any fun. And uh, we want to be learning along the way. We figured out uh, a way to make that happen. But uh, people constantly are looking for the gotcha in the assignment, and there isn't one. Uh, we are really just wanting you to understand what you need to understand to get your work done. And so uh, you need to ask questions. You need to um, make sure you're on the right track. Uh, but there's no real recipe. We're all figuring it out on our own. So it's a lot of investigation. You have to be curious to uh, be able to make these assignments happen. There's not a blueprint that we lay out ahead of time it's a path of inquiry. So the only way you can get through that is by asking questions. Um, professionalism. You guys have all probably clicked through already the, uh, the, uh, the section on professionalism here. Basically, it was a link to the student manual or something. But uh, when you clicked on it, it said it was 10% of your grade, which means that um, uh, a full 10% of your grade, you, you get credit for by assuming that you're well behaved and the philosophy behind this is that full sale isn't just interested in making you learn some software they aren't just interested in saying oh you're a person who knows photoshop or maya or uh, uh, c sharp we want to make you creative working professionals we want to teach you what it's like to be in a creative working industry and we want to prepare you to be somebody that people want to hire. And in order to do that, we have to treat you like a working professional uh, all the way through school. And uh, this professionalism component here is part of that. We expect you to treat each other like working professionals. We expect you to uh, behave in a professional manner, meaning that you want to meet your deadlines. You want to do what you say you're going to do. If you, if you promise something, you want to fulfill on that. And those times when you don't, then we will demerit. So the way professionalism works is you get 100% by uh, clicking the box. And then if you do everything correct or, or don't do anything that uh, reflects negatively upon you, uh, then you still get 100%. But through the month, if you're rude to someone in the chat box or you're, you're uh, being a, a troll or, or uh, doing uh, something that uh, uh, harms other people, we will take points off for that. We want people to act and treat each other with respect. And uh, that's usually not a problem in month one at all. And as you're working through and treating your colleagues with respect, you're becoming a great working professional. By the time most full sale students graduate, you've got terrific work habits. You're showing up for work on time. You're meeting your deadlines. You've already worked more in school than you're ever going to work at, at your job. And so uh, actually jobs become easier because they're less work than school fees. And uh, that's how we turn people into working professionals. And it's just a component of, of every single class. I want you to get used to it. And I want you to think about it as part of your training because it's becoming the whole person that you want to be. I don't need to say any much more about that. 
Uh, the bulk of this class is based on two books that we're going to be reading. And the books that we're going to read come from a service called Safari Books. Uh, the school has contracted with Safari Books, which is an external uh, online library. And we get all of our textbooks from, for all of our classes from there. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's bigger than just a, uh, a textbook fulfillment service. It really is an online library of over 100,000 titles. And everything in there specifically deals with the creative arts. So it's books on photography, it's books on 3D modeling, it's books on audio production, it's books on programming, it's books on filmmaking, it's books on uh, you know marketing and design. Um, only that's those subjects, but there's a hundred thousand of them. So any any book that you would want to see in your field is available there, and you have access to it uh, through Safari Books. Safari Books is basically uh, you've got a license to all of their content for the duration of being in school and you access them through school. If you go to their site, if you go to the Safari books website independently, they're going to ask for a credit card and want you to sign up because that's what they do to everybody else. But the school has made a block, um, uh, license with them. And so as long as you go through the Safari one links or the links that are on our website, uh, you will, um, go through automatically. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to dump out of the slides here momentarily and come to our website. So this is our website. Uh, most of you should have seen this earlier today. So if the reading assignment is 1.2 and we're reading from the book Resonate today. And so uh, we, we talk a little bit about it. We tell you which chapters of Resonate we want you to read. You're going to read the first four chapters in chapter seven. And there's a link here and here to get to the website. If you click on that link, it should direct you out across the internet and into this other website using your school credentials. So this actually logged me in because I was previously logged in. And these are the two books that we're reading and uh, they're available on that website. And again, 100,000 books, other books. So uh, while you're using this at school, Make sure you take advantage of looking at what other uh, books they have, because if you're interested in getting ahead and learning about, you know, audio production through uh, 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 Audio Pro and, and, and any other professional software, uh, you can you can find out how to that. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, um, software training. Safari Books has, has got a lot of it. If you're looking for video tutorials, lynda.com, which we also have a license with, which you can share for free, uh, we have that available. So you can read these books through the website. And if you're connected on a computer, if you're at home with a broadband permanent internet connection, that's the best way to read it. You're going to have big uh, full pages with lots of illustrations and uh, you know it's it has highlighting abilities and other things so we want you to read on the web but if you're not someone who's who's connected by a, the web if you come back to this first page the 1.2 down below the first link you'll see that there's a second link that says to access a version of this site specifically designed for mobile devices use this link so Safari books has uh, an app for iOS and they have an app for Android. It's called Safari to go and allows you to download the books off their website onto your phone. Cause we know that if you're using your phone, you don't want to be using your, your data all the time to be permanently connected. It'd be a terrible thing to read the book while you're connected via data because you would just be logging in charges. But if you download the entire book to your phone, then you can read that uh, book anywhere you want. Plus the phone, the version that's on the phone is formatted for the phone. One of the things that most people have trouble with on their phone is if you log into the regular website, this is formatted uh, too too wide for your phone, and it doesn't look it doesn't it's not very easy to read. So only try to read the website if you're on a computer. That's what it's designed for. If you're on a phone, I want you to try to get the mobile version because that's a lot easier on the eyes and it's a lot easier to do the reading and there's a link here that tells you uh, there's different 
there's different paths to follow depending on whether you're on an iPhone or an Android phone. So just follow this link and it will uh, engage you to the right software. And if you're having trouble connecting to um, Safari to go, uh, let get a hold of tech support or get a hold of me. Uh, we really need to know that if you're having trouble connecting, uh, you know, through credentials and things, that we can get that cleared away as soon as possible because you guys need to have access to the books. So back to the books. What are we reading and why? We're reading Resonate and Slideology. Now, these are both books that are written by the same author, Nancy Duarte. Nancy Duarte is a graphic designer. So she would go to lots of meetings and she'd be uh, taking proposals for uh, design jobs and whatnot. And as she was going to all these meetings in the 90s and, and the 2000s and so forth, uh, she'd notice that every time somebody has a, a, a meeting in an office, people would run PowerPoint. That was just the standard thing you do. Uh, somehow, everybody somehow got the memo that, that if you're having a meeting, you have to run PowerPoint. And so people would run PowerPoint, but people who'd never learned how to make a presentation proper would just open PowerPoint and use it. And we've developed into this habit of having these really awful, awful, awful PowerPoints that people make because they don't know any better. And uh, I'm going to tell you the secret right now. The, uh, the, th the reason that, that PowerPoints have a bad reputation, that people don't know what the, they're doing, is that Microsoft made PowerPoint as software for creating slides. Now, you can, if you think that's the same thing, you're, you're making a mistake there. It's not the same thing as making a presentation. It's making slides. So most people, when they're told that they have to make a presentation, they go and they open PowerPoint. What happens when you open PowerPoint? Uh, you get a little uh, uh, platform that asks you to pick a template. So you choose some colors and fonts and styles and whatnot, and then it logs you into slide one. And suddenly you're looking at slide one, and there's a blinking cursor, and it says, feed me. So you put something there, and once you've made one slide, it, it adds another slide, and that says, feed me. So it's pushing you to put content in here before you've done a whole lot of basic preliminary material that you need to do about figuring out what you learned, are going to say and do as a presentation. Most people screw up PowerPoint because they start it at the beginning, and it should only happen at the end. PowerPoint is really terrific software at making slides, and you shouldn't start making the slides until you've completely figured out who you're talking to, what you're having to say, and you've already made your entire presentation story to put together. It's not a tool for creating the message. It's a tool for making the slides, and the slides should only come in at the end. So that's the big secret. You're using PowerPoint correctly if you use it at the end after you've already figured out what you have to say. But if you're using it to figure out what you have to say, it's just going to uh, make you put thoughts on slides. And that's why most people end up writing parts of, of, of uh, speeches or scripts and, on slides, and uh, we end up with 50 words on a slide, and the person who's presenting it is just sort of reading off the slide. Well, there's no reason for that uh, to exist. If you're going to write a script, you should learn to read the script. You should, you should memorize the script, and you shouldn't need to show the audience the script. The audience can be seeing something else. So we're going to learn that pattern. This is what Nancy Duarte has to say to us. She um, realized that people were just making god-awful PowerPoints. And she thought, well, the first thing she thought as a designer was people need to know how to make good slides. So the first book she wrote was called Slideology. And uh, that was a huge hit. But it's a book that's purely about what is the graphic design of good slides. And she has a good... She has a lot of theories about how slides should work. She wants you not just, sometimes you can have just text, sometimes you can have just an image, but she thinks that the combination of text and image is much more precise in terms of having an effect on the audience and being specific about communicating what you have to say. Remember, slides aren't there to be pretty. They're there to communicate. 
And if they aren't being precise about what you mean, then that's your fault because you're the designer. You made the slides. So she wrote Slideology to tell us how to make better slides. And it was a huge hit. The book took off and, and uh, she made some pretty good money. But she realized she'd only told half the story, that she told people how to make slides and, and you only make slides at the end. So she wrote Resonate to complete the pattern. Resonate tells us how to think about presentations. She tells us what to do to begin, tells us what the initial uh, uh, planning should be, tells us how to turn it into a story, tells us what we should do and, and what kinds of uh, uh, tips and tricks we can use along the way. It completes the story of how to plan and create a presentation. So uh, obviously this week, as we're getting started, we're going to do most of our reading from Resonate. We're going to read the first four chapters. I'm going to read chapter seven. And in doing that, we're going to get pick up Nancy's philosophy about what presentations should be. And we're going to figure out if they make sense because we're going to uh, apply most of this information that we're reading to the main assignment where we're going to look at some TED Talks. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But uh, I want everybody to be able to do the reading. Now, you've got all week to do the reading. You, you're, you're assigned to do the reading. We want you to read all five chapters. But um, that's all we need you to do. Now, it's up to you how to make your own schedule. But I highly recommend that you get the reading done before you start working on the main assignment for the week, the TED Talks, because it's information that you need to know in order to properly analyze the TED Talks. So uh, don't try to do 1.4 and do the reading after because the reading is going to inform what you should know to do the assignment. So uh, again, this is just Monday. Nothing's due until Sunday. We're wanting you to make a plan. That's what online students should do. They sh each week you should come in and figure out what work there is to do and sort of plan it on along the way. And so uh, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, those are good days for getting the reading done. You have the reading done the first half of the week, then you have the second half of the week to work on the assignment uh, after you've completed the reading. So um, resonance is about change. Resonance is about what presentations can do. Nancy Duarte thinks that presentations are the way modern business works. She's in the creative industry. She's in graphic design, but she's She's been around, you know, audio design or uh, the audio industry and the movie industry and lots of places. And, and she realizes that in creative offices, when you have an issue, you don't want to waste a lot of time figuring out what the problem is. You want to tackle it right away. And the most uh, efficient way that people solve problems when they have an issue to deal with is you pretty much you schedule a meeting with the decision makers. Um, and it shouldn't be more than three or four days away. And you, you don't have a long meeting. You have maybe an hour. And the person who's running that meeting is going to start it off with a PowerPoint. And the whole point of that PowerPoint is to lay out the issues. It's to clarify for everyone, this is what we're here to decide. This is what we need to go through. So presentations necessarily, in order to solve their own function, need to be clear clean and concise. They need to be short. Presentations should never be padded. You shouldn't put a lot of stuff in presentations just to impress people. The, the briefer and, and sharper the presentation is, the better it is, because it's really about cutting to the heart of the issue. And uh, it allows people to understand what's going on. As, uh, uh, ideally, if you have an issue, and you schedule an hour uh, in a conference room with uh, your peers, you're going to talk for four or five minutes, maybe t 10 minutes max, and then you shut the PowerPoint off. And then the rest of that 50 minutes is everyone else discussing what we've, you've just learned and making a decision. By the time the meeting's over, the problem is dealt with. That's the way people move forward. That's what she means by uh, industry and, uh, and art thrive on change. Things move fast. You need to have quick solutions. And creative presentation is a way to get there quickly. And you can only do that if people are engaged, if the presentation actually works. If you're doing a presentation for its own sake, you're just wasting everybody's time. Everybody's sitting there like they're in church 
Like, oh, how long is this going to be? When can I get out of here? Uh, we've all sat through boring presentations. And the whole point, or the reason that a presentation is boring is that it becomes a recitation of facts. It doesn't hang together. It doesn't have any uh, media or emotion to it. So we have learned that if you just tell someone facts, people aren't going to remember them. It doesn't make for an engaging presentation. You don't want to just put your resume or the phone book together. Uh, it's not going anywhere. So if you want people to remember what you have to say, you have to tell a story. And anything you have to say can be put together in a story. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. So this is what we're going to learn this month. How to take what we have to say and put it into the form of a story so that it has emotion and context and people remember it and care about it. So uh, why is storytelling more effective than simple reporting? Well, we've actually studied this, and it comes down to uh, the way humans uh, relate to the world. And it's uh, storytelling is something that's as old as humankind. It's 100,000 years old. And when we had important information that we had to, to relay to our fellows, our literal survival as a species depended on you telling that story in an engaging enough way that people were going to remember the vital information that they needed to have. So if you were talking about the threats that were out there and you wanted to let people know, you had to do that in an engaging way. You know, the, the storyteller would gather around the fire and he would tell people what the issues were and he would make it exciting. He would tell a story. And people would be people would remember because there was media, because it was a story. Your brain is primed to care about things that come in a story form more than a list form. And uh, we've actually studied this. If you just tell people facts, there are a couple of places where uh, it connects in the brain. And then when people have to remember them, those, those areas of the brain aren't really connected to each other. And so you don't recall them. But if you add media and emotion, if you add story, there are several places where the same information gets stored. And that, and that accounts for easy recall because the excitement of it has associated different parts of the brain with the story, the information. So what are the elements you need to tell a story? I think you guys already know this. A story is composed of a beginning, middle, and end. Now that sounds pretty simplistic, but it means that you have to look at whatever it is you have to say. Because when we're talking about a story, we're not just talking about fiction. We're not just talking about some movie idea. A story can be, do we need to buy more pencils for the office? And if you put it in the beginning, middle, and end format, you are creating a context for people to understand and care about it. So what is the beginning? The beginning is laying things out. It's laying... It's telling people, what is the issue, where are we at, what is, uh, what is the starting point at A? Middle, what is the complication, what, what is uh, our options, what are the choices for where we have to go? And the end, what is the choice, what is the solution, what is what we have to pick from? So if you put any story or information choice that you have through this format, you can create something that makes more sense and is more compelling to your audience than a simple recitation of facts. And so working on your ability to tell a story is what we're going to uh, build on this month. Now, uh, I told you Nancy had a particular notion of the way she thinks slides should work. And she has a notion that com by combining a little bit of text and powerful images, that you're going to have a much more um, impact on the audience than just each by themselves. Now, there's times when a single uh, quote or, or, or sentence should be by itself, just text. And there are times where an image should just be by itself, that it, the image doesn't need any embellishment. But for the most part, if you have text, it can be assisted by an image that helps us to explain that text. If you have an image, 
it can be focused more quickly by a piece of text that puts a stronger uh, or more specific context on it. So let me let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, here's a quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. It's by Socrates. So if you know who Socrates is, he lived 3,000 years ago. This is a famous quote from long ago. This is uh, generalized education. This is something we've heard forever. Now, this is this is your basic quote, uh, black text on a white background. There is no image here to, to tell you what you should think about this. So there are any number of ways that you can interpret this quote. You can think about it as education today. You can think of about it as education through the ages. You can think about it via the source of, you know, uh, something connected to Socrates. But it's up to you to know how to interpret this because the quote is just here by itself. And it's, I haven't given you any assistance. But if I start to combine this quote with an image, I am giving you assistance. I am telling you how to interpret this. So if I want you to think about education today, if I want you to consider the urgency of education, of the importance in modern day life of education, I might combine this quote with an image of kids in a third world under an underpass educating themselves to give you a sense of the modern day, of the urgency of education, of, of the, the here and now. I have colored the way you understand this quote because of the way that I put it with an image. And maybe I want to mean something completely different. Maybe I did want to mean education through the ages, you know, that, that 3,000 years that this quote's been around. So if I take a Renaissance painting of Socrates and combine it with that quote, you now have that much loftier sense of education through the ages. It's no longer urgency. It is timelessness. So the combination of the image and the quote colors the way the audience interprets that quote. And it's my job as the artist to make that happen, to think about what is the image that's going to make them think a particular way about this quote. And for the most part, I need to know who my audience is. I have to understand who the audience is. So if I'm thinking about this quote and I'm thinking about Socrates and I'm thinking about you guys and I'm thinking, well, what do you guys care about Socrates? Most of you have never studied it. You probably in high school never got any Socrates. If you know who Socrates is, you probably know him from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure where he plays the character Socrates. So maybe that's my connection. If I know who my audience is and I know that you love movies and you like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, maybe I'll take a, a, a clip from a movie and put it there and that'll be my connection. And so we have a bonding moment between the audience and the speaker because I know what you know. Now, this is probably pretty risky for me at this point. Keanu Reeves is from the 90s. He's a pretty cool guy. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a pretty cool movie, but you guys probably haven't seen it. Uh, Netflix is around. I'm sure that you have the possibility of seeing it. Someone in this group has probably seen it, but I'm probably stretching it to say that I know that this group is going to be aware of this movie and that I can do an in uh, an inside uh, joke connection by knowing that my audience knows the same thing. But it's my job to know who my audience is. I have to know who I'm talking to. I know you guys probably care more about video games than uh, movies at this point. So it would probably be some video game uh, reference that I would go to more than a movie reference in knowing who my audience is. But that's my job as a creator. I have to understand who my audience is and I have to understand what references will connect and what references will go over your head. So um, I don't think this is a group that, that knows Keanu Reeves and, and uh, uh, Ted, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure too much. But if I, if I uh, want to connect with you, I will find a way to figure out what so Socrates and education will mean to this group, and that will be uh, the connection that I want to make. But it's my job, if I want you to understand, to find the right image and quote combination 
to say with more specificity what I want to say. That's what creative presentation is about. So it's about the presenter connecting with the audience. And so the most important thing to know is who the audience is. You have to focus in like a laser. I have so many students who come in to this class and they want to make generic PowerPoints. They want to make the same PowerPoint for any audience. And that is absolutely wrong. The most important thing when you start a presentation is to know who you're talking to. Once you know who they're talking to, you can start to factor in, this is how I'm going to connect. Are they interested in medicine? Are they interested in education? Are they interested in baseball? Are they interested in video games? Are they interested in social media? When I know what the common bond between myself and my audience is, then I can start to use references that will connect. Uh, there's nothing like telling a whole bunch of jokes that go over someone's head. Uh, that's going to feel really, really bad. So you want to know who your audience is. You want to know what they will respond favorably to, what they like, what they dislike, uh, and, uh, and, and what they're associating with. So that becomes your job as a person who's making this presentation. You have to know about enough about your audience to know what are they going to connect with. So uh, in storytelling lore, we always think about uh, telling a story is the journey of the hero. So if you're standing up and talking to these people, you might think, well, that makes you the hero. They're all focused in on you and you're telling them what's what. But uh, the way this works is you're not the hero. The audience is the hero. If you're telling a good story, then they're sitting back, listening to it, and they're imagining themselves go through this journey that you're talking about. So it's your job to take them on the journey. You're the person, you're not the hero. You're the person who engages the hero on the journey. Uh, and we have a specific name in storytelling lore about that. That's the mentor. So um, if, if, if Luke Skywalker is the person, the hero that goes on the journey, then Obi-Wan Kenobi is the mentor that engages him, that starts him out on that journey. And that is your job as a presenter. That is your job as a person who's creating these presentations. You've got to engage the audience. You've got to know what will propel them forward. You have to speak in, in uh, uh, active language that makes this an exciting journey that they're going to imagine themselves going through. You are guiding them through this story. And that is your job. That is what you need to learn to fulfill as you're telling the story and you're engaging the audience. Now, uh, presentations happen all kinds of ways. Uh, if you were in the, the uh, campus version of this course, you'd be doing a live presentation in front of class at the end of the month. Since you're in the online version, you're going to be creating a pre-recorded presentation and you're going to end up using your voice as the way that you connect with your audience. But everyone is going to voice their story and create a presentation in which you, uh, you take us through uh, a particular topic. I'm going to get into the, uh, the main assignment later on. Uh, the, the overall plan for this month is four weeks. This is the beginning week. We're going to look at a bunch of presentations, so we're not going to make any presentations this week. We're just going to we're going to we're going to uh, evaluate what other people do. We're going to look at uh, presentations and get a sense of what they are. Next week, I'm going to tell you what the your presentation topic is, and you're going to make a plan for it. So instead of jumping in right away to make slides, we're going to do the pre-production work next week. We're going to write the script. We're going to we're going to uh, figure out some information that we need to know about our uh, subject so that we are well informed and we are ready to create the presentation. Week three, we're going to create the presentation. And then in week four, you have a chance to revise the presentation based on feedback. So in week four, we get to make the presentation even better. We have a 2.0 uh, version of it. So that's our schedule for this month. This week, we're looking at presentations. Next week, we're planning a presentation. Week three, we're creating a presentation. Week four, we're revising a presentation. 
And uh, we're going to learn all that. That's the journey we're going to go on. And you're going to become creative presenters. So um, let's duck out of this slides here and go back to the uh, discussion board or go back to uh, the uh, course here and talk about this week's discussion. Um, this week, we want you to talk about what you what your personal history with presentations is. So there's a little bit about the assignment here. The main information on the assignment is this download here. We want you to download the first PDF. If you look at it, it will tell you what we're asking you to do. Uh, and so we have a series of prompts here. We want you to tell us uh, something about what you've done before. We want you to tell us what you're looking for. We want you to tell us about experiences you've had. Now, you can see that there are a number of prompts here. You don't have to answer all of these. These are just ideas. But I want you to give me a fuller sense of what your history with presentations has been. Were you in the Army? Did you have to make PowerPoints in the Army? Did you do something when you were in high school? Have you, did you do a presentation in church? Uh, have you done something in sales? Uh, did you create a video that you put on YouTube that uh, uh, maybe asked for a, a GoFundMe kind of thing? All of these are presentations that you could have made. Uh, did you have a good experience? Did you have a bad experience? Are you afraid to speak out in public? We have a lot of people who start off and they say, well, I, you know, I don't want to use my voice. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make that kind of PowerPoint. You are. That's absolutely required. That's the assignment. Everyone is going to speak. This is about using your voice to persuade people. And you can talk about how you're afraid. That's a good thing to do. But we're eventually going to get over it. And uh, if you're afraid to present to other people, you don't have to present to other people, but you have to actually do the assignment and turn it in. So um, what we want to hear from in this first month, in this first week, is where you're at, what you're looking to find out. Are you interested in particular software? Is there software that you'd like to get into a little more deeply? We have a variety of softwares that we show to people. We don't require that you use PowerPoint, but we do provide PowerPoint. So uh, a lot of people uh, want to know a little more deeply about the, the software. A lot of people want to have a chance to work on their persuasion skills. So tell me what you're doing with that. And that's the initial assignment. Uh, basically, you have a chance to post on this first page. If you go on to the discussion, you can see that I've written a little bit here. Uh, if you post in this top space here, that creates what we call an initial post. It's a, it's a posting that's attached to your name. If you come down here and hit reply, you're creating something that is attached to an existing post. So the assignment is asking you to make one significant initial post, and we would like you to try to do it by Wednesday, and come back and read what other students have written and respond to two or more students with substantial replies. And I say substantial replies. I don't want you to just say, hey, terrific job, and leave it at that. I want you to talk about what they said. I want you to engage with them. I want you to write a significant amount in replies. So these are the assignments. You're being graded for this. So I want you to write about two or three paragraphs for your initial post, and I would like your uh, replies to be at least a paragraph long so that we're having a more full discussion. And uh, if it gets past Wednesday, you can still do your initial post. But uh, I want the, the assignment closes on Sunday night. So everyone has to have their initial post and replies up by Sunday night. I would like everyone to have their initial post up by Wednesday so that we just get it over with. And it's up. If you wait too long to put your post up, then other people are not going to have a chance to reply to you. But if you get your post up by Wednesday, then everybody can come back and we have uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for people to go through all the initial posts and reply to their classmates. 
And I'd like you to reply to more than two classmates if you can. The minimum is two. But uh, I would like to see you really engage here. It's a good chance to get to talk to your classmates. Talk to them about the software they're, they're mentioning. Uh, you can give recommendations if you've used software, if you like something and you want to recommend it to other people. If they had an experience and you want to comment on that, you can give them uh, uh, your own version of, of how that went and so forth. So this is a good chance to get to start to talk to your classmates and know how they're going. Um, the first post, again, should be done by Wednesday. So the main assignment is called Professional Presentation Analysis. And it has to do with TED Talks. Now, I can't swear that everybody knows what TED Talks is. If you've never heard of TED Talks, it's a conference. Uh, they go around the country, or they go around the world, actually, and they have three or four day conferences. And instead of having one speaker who speaks for an hour and a half or two hours, they have 20 or 30 speakers and they all deliver short, interesting presentations. Every single TED Talk that they've ever given is between six and 20 minutes long. So again, a good presentation is short and to the point. And every time they host these things live, they, 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 they're done out in the real world, but they get videotaped. So at this point, there are over 3,100 of them that have been previously done, and the videos of them are all on the TED.com website. So your assignment this week is to come in here and look at uh, as many TED Talks as you like. I really want you to take some time and go down the rabbit hole. You know, uh, with online education, what we often do is we build in spaces for you to have kind of like a, a fun moment. And so uh, really there's no reason why you shouldn't spend eight or 10 hours watching TED Talks and look at 40 of them. You'll only be smarter for doing so. But you have to pick three. So I want you to find three TED Talks and I want you to write reviews of them. Now. The instructions here, I don't want you to review the TED Talk. I want you to review the presenter. I want you to tell me how well the presenter did his or her job. And your criteria for being able to judge whether the presenter did a good job or not is what you've read in these first five chapters of Nancy Duarte. So having read these first five chapters of Nancy Duarte, apply what you've learned in there to how well these presenters do their job. So uh, here, here, there's just an amazing number of subjects here, but I'm going to pick one at random. What I learned from writing jokes for the onion. So that's a pretty interesting talk. Um, they all have the same opening. This one's 13 minutes long. Plays on the website. Turn the audio down. They always give you closed captions if you want. But uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging we can see that he's on a stage and he's talking. Uh, this was done in Bloomington. So this is a recording of this fellow delivering his talk. So you have the chance to watch this all the way through. And when you're done, if this is one you want to review, you tell me how well he did his job. And what did he do? How did he connect to the audience? What did he uh, What did he use to connect with uh, them? And, and uh, um, again, an awful lot of what you're going to talk about, you're going to pick up in the language from what Nancy Duarte has given you in those first five chapters. So if I come back to the instructions here, again, the instructions you want to download. There's a PDF here. If you have trouble reading the PDFs, let me know. If you're on a phone. Sometimes the PDFs can give people trouble. Uh, I have taken the trouble of uh, breaking some of these PDFs up into uh, phone-friendly images. So if you need that help, you can. But uh, you need to download the actual instruction PDF to know what the assignment is all about. And here we see the instructions. Research and watch a minimum of three different TED Talks to answer the question, what makes a presentation effective, creative, captivating, and or inspiring? 
You can choose any TED Talk you want, paying special attention to how the message is crafted and communicated. So you have all 3,100 of these TED Talks that you can pick. I want you to pick three. I don't want you to do more than three. Just pick three and give me a two to three paragraph review of each TED Talk. And I want you to tell me what they did right or if they did something wrong. Tell me what they did wrong. Tell me uh, how they made it compelling. You want to identify the speaker. You want to identify the, um, the name of the talk. So if I come back here, you want to tell me that this is Brian Janosch and the title was What I Learned from Writing for the Onion. And you might want to tell me a little bit about what his content was. But mostly I want to know how well did he do as a performer. You are reviewing his performance. And so I want your opinion about this, but I want you to use more or less Nancy's language. And uh, as we come through here, there's a number of prompts here that you can ask yourself to help you figure out what to review. I don't want you just to take these as questions and answers. Don't do that. You want you to incorporate this in and make me paragraph style reviews. So I want these uh, um, reviews of the, of the presenter to be your opinion incorporating some of these topics. So there's going to be three of those. And then at the end, conclude your assignment with your own list of 10 qualities, techniques, and presentation skills that made the presentations you watched inspiring, captivating, creative, and effective. Uh, sentences are kind of long. But um, anyway, this is stuff that will come directly out of the Nancy Duarte reading. But three two to three paragraph reviews and one list of 10 qualities at the end. That's what I'm looking for. And I don't want it just to be a list. I want you to point to examples. So if you say he told jokes, then point to who told jokes at what point. And then I missed step two here. Create a document for this assignment and include supporting imagery. Now this sometimes confuses people. I want you to make a written document. I don't want you to use PowerPoint. I want you to use Word or uh, um, um, uh, Google Doc or uh, Apple Pages or whatever Word document you want to use. You, you have freedom to use writing anything. But I want you to give me a written assignment, and then I want you to add pictures to it. Now, where do you get those pictures? You can take them off the Internet, or you can make them yourself. Uh, for the most part, I want you to choose pictures that help me understand what you have to say. And here's the analogy. If you tell me a story in a presentation, that's the content. That's what would be in text. And the slides would help me understand what you have to say. So in creating this document, I want you to write these reviews, and I want you to write these list of 10 qualities, and then I want you to add visual images, basically pictures, and for the most part, I'm expecting them would probably be screenshots from TED.com that help me to understand what you have to say. Now, if you don't know how to make a, uh, uh, a screenshot, uh, it's built in on a Mac. I'm on a Mac right now. If you're on a PC or a, a phone, uh, there are different ways to make screenshots. Uh, usually, you want to use the Chrome browser with an extension, but what you have uh, a screenshot, you can just drop that straight into a document. So let me show you some examples of what I'm looking for. I want to share this freely. I'm not trying to make this a mystery to anybody. So I have previous student files. The Art of Misdirection, Apollo Robbins, and then a screenshot. I see what Ro Apollo Robbins looks like. I get their opinions. Here's another write-up. Here's another write-up, and oh, here's 10 qualities. That's exactly what I'm looking for. These are examples of what uh, I would like to see. And anybody who wants to uh, borrow examples, just send me a message. Uh, send me a message on the system. Send me a text. Send me an email. Uh, and I will share different samples with you. Because my rule is, if I share samples with you, you can't use those TED Talks. Now, there's no particular set of TED Talks that I want to block off, so I'm not going to give everybody the same sample. But if I give you an example, you can't use the TED Talks that are in the examples that I give you. 
But the example should tell you uh, there's no set rule for how many photographs. It's up to you. But I'm judging you on how well those photographs help me understand what you've written. Not whether they're cool photographs, not whether you had a whole bunch of them, but whether you chose the appropriate image to help me understand. That's what we want images to. We want images to support what we have to say so that the written document makes more sense. And here, and you're writing your list of 10 uh, uh, qualities, you can list the quality and then you can tell me where an example of it is. If you give an example, you get a much better grade than if you just simply list the quality. But uh, again, no particular rule for how to do this. Lay it out the way you like. Uh, write it what you like. Uh, choose as many images as you like. Uh, you can turn it in as a, a Word doc or a PDF. And when you turn in your assignment, note that there is a little completion box. If you have a file on your computer, you can actually drag that file onto the completion box and let go, and that will upload to the system. So if you want to turn in your homework on Sunday, um, if you have a file on your computer, you would upload it via this system. However, a lot of you are going to be doing this on your phone, and you may be using a, an online system in which instead of having a file, you have an online link. Like if you use um, Microsoft Office online, then the file might be saved in the cloud. If that's the case, you're providing a link to the document, not the file, document itself. The distinction is if you have an actual file, you upload it through the completion box. If you have a link to a document, you can use the feedback box here on that assignment to say, here's the link to my online file. Now, when I go back, uh, when I mention uh, uh, online file, I want to come back and mention something else, which is a really cool deal that Microsoft has put in place uh, for all students. Now, this isn't a, this isn't a full sale deal so much as this is a Microsoft deal. Microsoft, uh, in order to make the next generation of uh, you know, digital warriors uh, get hooked on their software, has a deal where they will give you free access uh, to their latest, greatest office suite uh, for free if you're a student. All you need is a legitimate student email ID. So because you're now legitimate full sale students, and you have a fullsale.edu email address, you're entitled to a full four-year license to Office 365. This is the greatest deal going. This is something that might, really nice that Microsoft does. And as a result, you have access to Office 365 online, meaning that you can go to their website and use Word and PowerPoint in a, a browser and store your material online. You can also download the software to any two devices. So you can put it on uh, a PC, you can put it on a Mac, you can put it on an Android device, or you can put it on an iOS device, meaning either an iPhone or an iPad. So uh, the license that Microsoft grants to all students is a four-year license that you can put on any device you like, any two devices you like. So if you want to put it on a PC now and then put it on your uh, launch box uh, when you get a Mac in four months, you can do that. If you get an iPad right now, you can put it on uh, that right now and you can put it on the launch box in, in two months. But uh, any two devices you like, you can put it on. And so the links in the bottom of the 1.4 page will point you to how to install for Windows, how to install for Mac, how to install for Android and how to install for iOS, which means either iPhone or iPad. Uh, and the, the cool thing for full sale students about this offer is Microsoft expects you to go to school for four years. They give you a four year license from the time you first sign up, you, you, you're entitled to four years usage of that. And you're gonna graduate from school in less than four years. You're gonna graduate from school in two and a half years. So you're gonna have a year and a half, you, worth of usage of it after you graduate that's completely legit because that's the Microsoft deal. So uh, you do not have to use Microsoft software. 
So um, you have a choice, but Microsoft is making it available, and I think it's a pretty good deal. And I think that uh, the school is expecting you to use this office suite to run Outpost. So your school email is definitely going to be running on Outlook. And you have access to Office, and you have, or you have access to Word, and you have access to PowerPoint. And so if you have an older version of PowerPoint, I encourage you to use this uh, opportunity to get the latest PowerPoint. When we want to help people with PowerPoint, it's very important for us that you're on the latest version because older versions of PowerPoint can have all kinds of weird bugs in them that we're not aware of. And if you're on the latest version of Word, then we know that you can do uh, all kinds of modern things like creating multimedia documents and so forth. So uh, if you create your 1.4 file, uh, you can export it as a PDF or a Word doc, either one, and uh, you can then upload it to the system. So uh, anybody that wants examples of uh, these 1.4 assignments, all you have to do is send me a note this week. And it doesn't have to be right now, but uh, you know later in the week, once you start getting working on it, you might want to have uh, a sample for uh, uh, comparison. So uh, that's me exhausted. I think I've said as much as I need to say. Uh, so now I just want to answer some questions. Anybody that has a question, you can raise your hand in the, uh, the list, or you can just type a, a question in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer any questions. If we don't have any questions, I'll let you guys go. Uh, and uh, if if I mention something and it went by you, remember I'm recording all this and it's going to be posted very shortly so you'll be able to check it online. And you might ask where the file will be. Uh, if we go back to where you signed up, 1.1, here's the link where you signed up. Uh, right now it says go to, go to training recordings. In about an hour, there'll be a video down here, and you'll be able to watch that video through the rest of the week. So, uh, yes, Microsoft Office is free. It's something they give to all students with a valid uh, student ID uh, email. So uh, take advantage of that while you're a student. Uh, all right. No more questions. I'm going to let you guys go. I want you to have a great week. Uh, the whole point of this was just to get you started, let you figure out what you needed to get done, and uh, uh, just start to make a plan. As an online student, it's really tough to get going. Uh, they say that it takes about six to eight weeks to make a habit. And our class is only four weeks, so know that you're not really going to get your study habits quite right until you're down a couple of classes. And so uh, you're going to run into things um, your life is going to intercede. Someone's, your boss is going to ask you to walk over, work overtime. Your kids are going to have to go into the uh, emergency room or, or whatever. Something's going to happen. But uh, know that we're sort of practicing forgiveness this month. Uh, we're not going to be so hard asked about deadlines. We want you to let us know what's going on with you. If you're having any issues, please stay in touch with us. That's really the only way online works. Is that you? contact us because it's really hard for us to know what's going on with you if you don't do that. But uh, uh, this, these, these opening sessions let you make a plan, figure out what you want to get done through the week, and by Sunday you will have knocked all of this out. It's not that much. Uh, it's going to keep you busy, and it's going to be fun, but uh, it shouldn't be more than you can handle. And anybody that's feeling stressed, just get a hold of us. We'll talk you down off the ledge. Uh, you guys have a great week, and welcome to Full Sail once again.